It's a bee. Get out of here! Oh, it's a fly. No, it's a bee. <sighs> Howdy and welcome everybody. Today, I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about the top five most common manual transmissions used in one and two JZ swaps. I'll give some general information about each transmission and then I'll go into the pros and cons of each. So I'm gonna start with the two transmissions that I have personal experience with and then we'll get into the rest. So to start out, we have probably the most common manual transmission used with one and two JZ engines, which is the Toyota R154. Now the R154 is a five-speed transmission that came in two variations, the tripod style and the non-tripod style. I'm gonna note right here that if you're swapping this transmission into an S chassis, if you get the non-tripod style, you will need a shifter extension, and if you get the tripod style, you do not need a shifter extension. The R154 came in the Mark III Super Turbo, but overseas it came in a host of other Toyota vehicles such as the Chaser and the Soar. This transmission has a gear ratio of 0.753 in fifth gear, which means that if you're in a 240SX, traveling down the highway at 70 miles an hour, you'll be at approximately 2,900 RPMs. Now let's talk about the pros that the R154 has going for it. First off, it is a relatively cheap transmission compared to others on this list. You can pick one up for about 2,000 to 3,500 bucks, and Drift Motion actually sells this transmission brand new if you wanted to buy it from them. However, at the moment, it is back ordered. The transmission can hold about 600 horsepower pretty reliably, but there have been cases where people go far beyond that as long as you treat the transmission pretty nice. And what that means is that you're not slamming gears and you're not doing hard launches. Another pro is that companies offer a lot of rebuild and upgrade services for this transmission. So if you wanted to go out and make sure that your transmission was totally refreshed or upgrade some common weak points, there are plenty of companies that go ahead and do that for you. And finally, this transmission mates up to the 1 and 2 JZ really easily. You don't need any adapter kits and it's such a compact transmission that you don't need to bang out the tunnel, at least on the S chassis, to make it fit. So let's get into the cons a little bit here. One major one is that you can't slam gears on this transmission. You have to treat it really nicely in order for it to hold up to the power. Another con is the weak point of this transmission. Now obviously every transmission has a weak point, but this one is a pretty fatal flaw. In first gear, the thrust washer is known to be super, super weak. So if you have drag radials on the back of your car and you wanna do a first gear launch, you can pretty much say goodbye to the transmission if you're putting down any respectable power levels. What's nice though, is that you can upgrade that first gear thrust washer with any of the rebuild or upgrade services that we talked about earlier, and you really won't have that problem anymore. Another common problem on the non-tripod style R154 is pressure buildup in the extension housing. So what commonly happens is that the pressure builds up so much that fluid will blow out where the shifter attaches to the transmission, which can get fluid all over the inside of your cabin if you don't have a shift boot or a seal there. Another scary thing that can happen is that the rear output seal of this transmission can also pop out due to that pressure buildup. So what happens is when you're doing highway pulls or you're at high RPMs and high power levels, that rear output seal will pop out and it'll spray gear oil all over your rear tires, which I'm sure you can assume is problematic when you're going relatively fast down the highway or wherever you are. Now that pretty much wraps it up for the R154. So let's get into the next transmission, which is the Tremec T56 Magnum F. Now the T56 is a six speed transmission transmission, and there's also a company out there called Granis Racing who offers a conversion kit for this transmission to mate it up to the 2JZ and a ton of different cars. The kit that Granis Racing offers costs an arm and a leg, but it comes with every part that you need, and it's super high quality. The Tremec T56 comes in a lot of newer and older muscle cars, so it can definitely handle a lot of torque and therefore a lot of horsepower. This transmission has a gear ratio of 0.63 in six gear, which means that if you're in a 240SX, cruising down the highway at 70 miles an hour, you'll be at about 2,400 RPMs. Brandis Racing even offers the T56 with a taller gear ratio, which brings six gear down to a 0.5 gear ratio, but that's only if you have a really high geared rear end on your car. Now, one big pro of this transmission is just how much abuse, power, and torque it can handle. My transmission is rated for a constant 700 foot-pounds of torque, and it can go well above that for short durations. Grandis Racing also offers transmissions like the GR1000, which can handle a constant 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. So it's safe to say that this transmission can hold well over 1,000 wheel horsepower on most applications, and you could probably, if you get the upgraded transmissions from Grandis Racing, go all the way up to 2,000 and probably beyond that. Another huge pro of this transmission is just how much abuse you can throw at it, and 
it'll hold up to pretty much anything. You can do as many clutch kicks, burnouts, whatever you want with sticky tires in the back and it will hold. It is an incredible transmission and you can also shift really as fast as you want. Now let's get into the cons of this transmission. First off is the price. The Grandis Racing Kit is incredible. Don't get me wrong, it's super high quality and comes with everything that you need. And Joel, who is the owner of Grandis Racing, has a, he can support whatever you need to do. So it's a really good kit, but it costs about $7,000 when it's all said and done. And unfortunately, that's a price tag that most people just can't afford. Now, personally, I went with the buy once, cry once mentality when I picked up this transmission, meaning that I won't have to worry about it for a very long time. But unfortunately, like I said earlier, a lot of people aren't fortunate enough to be able to just pick up one of these kits. Now, another problem with this transmission is that it is beefy. It is thick with like five C's, guys. Trying to get it to fit in the S chassis was one heck of an ordeal. You have to do a ton of banging out of the transmission tunnel to get it to fit how you want and to sit properly. And I had to pull the engine out two times and bang out the transmission tunnel even more and then put it back in and take it out, bang out the transmission tunnel again to get it to fit. It was annoying, but once it fits, it fits. So, um, you know, I guess it's just a one-time deal, but it definitely was pretty hard to get into the car um, with, the, with it attached to the engine. I actually don't know a lot of people People that install the transmission connected to the engine for the S chassis just because it's such it's such a long assembly but um, it, it can be done and it is pretty pretty hard to fit so just make sure you you know that going into it another common problem is that when this transmission is cold it is incredibly notchy and kind of hard to shift as I found during my very first drive with this transmission in my car now as it warms up it gets buttery smooth so it's nothing to worry about but in the winter, I'm sure I can see people having some problems with that, um, but you just need to let it warm up a little bit. And another kind of small problem that won't bother a lot of people, but I just wanted to note it, is that when you're sitting in neutral and the clutch is engaged, so your foot is off of the clutch, you get what's called the box of rocks noise, or it just basically sounds like a kind of a soft, box of rocks coming from your transmission because of all of the tolerances being pretty loose um, because it's meant to hold up to a lot of power so the tolerances are kind of a little bit wider and, and looser than normal so you get kind of a little bit of transmission noise when you're say sitting at a red light and you're just chilling in neutral there is a little bit of noise there but shouldn't bother a lot of people i know that a lot of people that have commented on it just get used to it over time and it really isn't that loud or that annoying um, if you kind of want to hear what this sounds like I have a video of me driving this transmission, so, or driving this car with the transmission in it. So I'll post that, uh, should be right there and you can go and check that out. Now let's get into the next transmission and it is a pretty common one for these two JZ and one JZ swaps. And that is the CD009. The CD009 is a Nissan transmission that came in the 350Z and the Infiniti Q35. Q45, one of, one of those cars. So this transmission needs an adapter kit to fit up to the 2JZ, which you can pick up from all sorts of companies, but Collins is the most, um, I would say the most common kit that people buy for this uh, for this conversion. It should also be noted that depending on the year of the CD009 that you pick up will dictate the performance that you're gonna get out of it. For example, in 2003, when they introduced the transmission, it had no triple cone synchros and a ton of single cone synchros. But if you pick up a transmission that was made in 2005 to 2006, which was arguably the best years to get it, it had triple cone synchros in first, second, third, and a double cone synchro in fourth. What was that? So if you're gonna pick up this transmission, I recommend getting a 2005 or 2006 model. In six gear, it has a gear ratio of 0.79, which means that if you're cruising down the highway at 70 miles an hour in a 240SX, you're gonna be at about 3,100 RPMs, which is kind of high. So let's get into the pros. First of all, it is a super widely available and cheap transmission. You can pick up one from anywhere from 700 bucks to about 2,000 bucks. And if you're spending 2,000, you're gonna be able to pick up a pretty nice model. Probably one of those 2005 to 2006 ones. This transmission also holds up really, really well to power. There are people making over a thousand horsepower on this transmission with no problems and you don't have to treat it as kindly as the R154. It's also known to be a relatively smooth transmission, which is also a pro. But let's get into some of the cons. So one con is that to install the adapter kit on this transmission, you need to cut off the original bell housing. Most people use an angle grinder for this, but it's certainly 
kind of tedious, something that you need to have some experience to do. I should also mention, if I didn't before, that the adapter kit from Collins is about 1,800 bucks. So make sure you take that into account when you're thinking about which transmission to get, because there are certainly added costs that you need to spend in order to make this work with the 2JZ. Another con, like the T56, this is a beefy boy transmission. It is thick, it is long, it's hard to install because of how, how big it is, you're gonna need to bash out that transmission tunnel, at least in the S chassis, to get it to fit. I know a lot of people don't have a problem with this, um, but for the people that are just looking for a super easy install that bolts right up, this is probably not for you. Another common issue that I found with this transmission is that after a lot of abuse, it tends to whine and grind a lot. I know a lot of transmissions will probably do the same thing if you're really abusing it a lot, but um, this is a pretty common thing that I've read all over the Nissan and Infinity forums, and people that have done this swap also say the same thing, that after a while, it tends to whine, grind, and they need to get a rebuild or an entirely new transmission. Next up on our list is the GetRag V160 and V161 transmissions. Now, this is a six-speed transmission that is really widely known in the super community because it can handle a ton of power and it is buttery smooth. It came in the Mark IV Supra Twin Turbo, and it is an absolutely phenomenal transmission. The gearing isn't bad at all either. In six gear, you have a gear ratio of 0.8, which means in a 240SX traveling down the highway at 70 miles an hour, you will be at about 3,100 RPMs. The pros for this transmission are super easy to pick out. It holds a ton of power. You really can't break them. If you try to, you will, but they hold well over a thousand horsepower. Um, so that's definitely super awesome. And they're really smooth transmissions as well. Normally you don't get those two things together. So that's why this one is of note. But with such big pros, there are going to be some pretty big cons. Number one, you can't find this transmission pretty much anymore. And if you do find one for sale, it is going to be extremely expensive. Doing my research for this video, I really even couldn't find one for sale. I found a couple that were already mated to two Jay-Zs, but those were selling for about $19,000. And if you say that the engine goes for about say 10,000 and that's being pretty conservative, it's probably less than that. That means that these transmissions are selling for around nine to $10,000 and generally more than that. But let's say you were actually able to purchase one. Now you have another big issue. There are really no parts that you can buy if something breaks on this transmission. So it's such a legendary rare transmission to find that it's really difficult to fi find like um, parts to replace parts that break on it. So if you broke a synchro or something on it, you know, it's going to be really difficult to fix that. And uh, that's definitely a problem. So I just, I don't know a lot of people that are going to just go out and do a 2JZ swap and find a V160 and just pop one in. Um, but if you do, you know, just remember that it's gonna be hard to find parts for it if something breaks, so there you go. And the final transmission we're gonna talk about today is the BMW ZF transmission. Now the BMW ZF transmission isn't just one transmission, it is a host of all different sorts of models and variations of the same transmission. They came in five and six speed configurations. So for the sake of uh, today's video, I'm just gonna go with a common one used for two JC swaps. I would say relatively common, which is the S531 transmission, which is a five speed. So for this transmission to fit to the 2JZ, an adapter kit is needed, but you do not need to cut off the bell housing like the CD009, which definitely makes it easier for those that just want to, you know, kind of bolt stuff up and install it. And in terms of gearing, this transmission has really short gearing. In fifth gear, it has a 1.0 gear ratio, which means that if you're cruising down the highway in a 240SX at 70 miles an hour, you will be at 3,000. 900 RPM. So you are probably going to be needing to change that differential uh, gear ratio, that final drive, you know what I'm saying? Now let's talk about some pros for this transmission. Number one, they are super, super widely available. Probably one of the most common transmissions on our list to find. You could pick them up from junkyards, eBay, wherever. You can certainly find a BMW ZF transmission. Because they're so common, they're also super cheap. Depending on the one you get, you can get one from anywhere from say 300 bucks to 2000. If you, you know, if you get a really late model one that has good synchros and is well built, you're gonna be spending more money. So in terms of power, on average, the ZF transmission can hold about 500 reliably. 
Um, there are upgrade services out there. They're not as common as the R154, but you can definitely upgrade them or get later model ZF transmissions to make more power, but they definitely hold abuse really, really well. They hold power well, um, so yeah. And the final pro is just how small and compact they are. You don't even need a second person to install this onto the engine. You can just pick it up and put it right onto the engine and bolt it up, no problem. That also means that installing it in the car is never gonna be a problem. It is short, it's, it's not thick, so you don't need to bang out the transmission tunnel, and um, it'll also be super easy if you wanted to bolt it up to the engine and then just drop it in from the front. You can certainly do that. Now, some cons for this transmission. Um, you're definitely gonna need a shifter extension uh, because it's so short, you're gonna need some some way to get that shifter all the way back to the you know wherever your shifter hole is in your car. So just make sure you know that. We talked about this earlier, but another con is the gearing on this transmission. It is super short. Uh, you're gonna need to change the final drive in your car 90% of the time. So that you know if you figure that into the cost, they're not as cheap as you kind of let on to be, especially when you add the adaption. Oh. It's getting windy, especially when you add the adapter kit onto it. And another con that I wanna talk about is that not a lot of people mate the ZF transmission to the 2JZ or the 1JZ. Um, so support out there is hard to find. You can't really find a lot of threads on people that do it. So if you come across a problem or you have a question, there aren't that many people out there that can answer those questions or so help solve the problem with you. Um, I know from personal experience, I had a ton of questions when I was joining the R154 and the T56 to the 2JZ. So knowing that you probably wouldn't have any support or anybody that you could go to with questions is kind of daunting. You probably really need to know what you're doing. So that wraps up our top five transmissions. This is not to say that those are the only five manual transmissions that you can use with the 2JZ. I mean, if you had enough money, you could make pretty much any transmission you wanted to the 2JZ. Um, but these are probably the most common ones that people use. I should note that the W58 transmission, which is kind of the little brother to the R154, also is pretty easy to install and it is pretty commonly used, but it does not hold power well at all. So I didn't really want to add it to this list because I've heard that reliably it can only handle about 400 horsepower. And for most people that are doing swaps, you're probably going to want to shoot for probably a little, at least a little bit higher than that. But if you're doing a non-turbo swap, that is a perfect choice for you because it's really, really cheap. And if you're not making a lot of power, um, it's also a pretty smooth transmission. So there you go. If you're, if you're not planning on making a bajillion horsepower, um, I would go take a look into the W58. And one last semi-common transmission that people use is the Azen, I, I think I'm saying that right, the Azen AR5. Um, it's really not super common. It holds power relatively well. It's semi-cheap. It's kind of getting hard to find these days. So um, yeah, people, people use that, but it's definitely not as common as the five that we talked about today. So that's all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, please go subscribe, like, and comment. I don't generally say that, but I put a lot of time and effort into research for this video. So I hope you guys will do me a solid. And if you want, uh, maybe just go throw a comment down below and say hello or something. Um, so anyway, that's all I've got. Have a good one, guys, and I will catch you all right in the next one. Peace.